friends, welcome to Incredibly Useful Exercises, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short, stolen moments. I'm Dennis Whitaker. Thank you for joining me in today's exploration of an exercise I wrote called Quick and Dead, which will focus primarily on developing velocity, control, and coordination. First, I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. Joey sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and on my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my babies keeps them sounding beautiful. Many professional working basses throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also very wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website, listed in the description below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. Quick and Dead is my favorite tongue twister. You're going to find this very frustrating at first, but stick with it and I know you'll see results. This exercise is about two and a half to three minutes long and has the following category ratings that I've rated on a scale of one to six. A control rating of two, a mindfulness rating of four, which means you have to think about it, expression and power are zero, a velocity rating of two, a coordination rating of five, and it also has an endurance rating of zero, but that doesn't mean that I don't seek out this exercise to increase my endurance. A collateral benefit of this exercise is a major leap in playing endurance, which I will explain in a little bit. We practice this exercise for two primary reasons. First, for the exercise of quick and independent finger placement, and also for the exercise of targeted relaxation of unused fingers, or what I call dead fingers. You can see the music on the screen. Notice the asterisks in the music. The asterisk indicates when to place the next fingered note on the G string while playing the open D string. For instance, in section A, you see that the asterisk is on the fourth eighth note in each pattern. This means that I play the open strings, and when I see the asterisk, I place my finger for the next note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In section B, I place, relax, and hold my finger on the third eighth note of each pattern like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. And in section C, I place, relax, and hold my second finger on the second eighth note in each pattern. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this is the one that gives me the most trouble, especially when I'm workshopping this exercise because I always try and speak while I'm playing it, which is never really a good idea, but I love to do it. The important part of this exercise happens when I have my fingers down, fingers that are not relaxed, are, that are not playing a note, I mean, are very dead and very relaxed. Like this, my fourth finger is down, my other fingers are very soft. My first finger is down, my other fingers are very soft. Note that when you have your hand in a sideways relaxed position, Note how the fingers are very curved and natural. So when I move it down, it's straight. When I move it like that, it's very round. When I go sideways, it's round and natural. This is exactly what I want my fingers to look like when they are not engaged. As I am playing, you will see me wiggle my unused fingers to test their tension level. They're not in the air, but they're also not pressing down into the string. This is going to take a lot of patience and practice at first, but you will get the feel of it and will eventually learn how to make your fingers go dead as quickly as you engage them into the string. This is the aspect of this exercise that will increase your endurance exponentially. By relaxing unused fingers, you are putting the players on the bench when they're out of the game, letting them rest and recover, and have more strength when they are called back in. So my recovery plan for this exercise when I play it through, if I fall apart during the exercise, is to recognize that it is normal to want to move your left finger at the same time as I move my bow. This is the motion we're trying to retrain. I'm going to continue playing past any mistakes I make, 
and I'm going to recover for the next measure. I'm confident that when I revisit this exercise tomorrow that the missteps will fade. I'm also going to pay attention to and relax the non-playing left fingers often. It's a lot to think about, but I'm confident that I can do it. So when I play this exercise, I don't use a metronome, but I do keep it very steady. You ready to give it a try? All right, let's go. One, two, ready, go. And that, friends, is quick and dead. It's a tongue twister, but it's very worthwhile. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find this exercise as useful for your performance as it has been for mine, and I would love to hear any success stories that it brings you. Please remember that I present these exercises in the way that I have used and benefited from them. I never intend to say that this is the only way to practice this or to approach this concept. Feel free to adapt any of these ideas into your own way that best suits your playing style. Practice this and all other exercises in this series in short stolen moments or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and leave any comments or observations down below. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you and be well, friends.